Hello friends, this video on structure of atom part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 19. If you see the continuous spectra, the white light is continuous. If you, if you pass this to a prism, you'll see a web jaw thing is all continuous, right? It's all continuous. That is nothing but a continuous spectra. But in, in the, the, the spectra which we get when we excite a hydrogen atom or any other atom, that is not continuous. That's because inside the atom, inside the atom, my energy is quantized. I have this energy E1, E2 and E3 and I have only certain delta A is possible. Correct? But when you see the white light, it's a, I mean, it's a continuous spectra. Correct? And the reason why we use uh, prism is there's a white light and uh, the velocity of light is different in the different medium and it's bent, this prism bends light uh, differently, all the lights and you get this different colors, right? Because if you see the speed of light depends on the nature of the medium it passes. As a result, light is deviated or refracted from the original path when it passed through. The light of red color, which has the longest wavelength, is deviated the least. And the light of violet, which is the one which is deviated the maximum. And that's the use of prism actually. So we talk about emission spectrum. Emission spectrum of a radiation. So the spectrum of radiation emitted by substance that absorbs energy is called emission spectrum. I'll tell you. For example, this is my uh, electron. I'm just following the Bohr model to make because Bohr model is more visual. You can understand things, but at the same time, Bohr model is not correct. So if you see in this case, if my electron is here and it absorbs some energy, the moment it absorbs energy, it will jump to a higher orbital. Correct? And then when it jumps to a higher orbital, it absorbs some energy. But as soon as you remove that extra energy, it again jumps back and it emits light. Emits photon. See, the electron was happily sitting here, I'll show you. There's an electron and this guy was happily sitting in this level. You gave some energy, it went here. But the moment you lose energy, this guy, electron will all want to come back to its low energy state. And while coming back, it will emit photon. And that photon is an emission photon actually, it will emit. So here the same thing, you have this, uh, uh, any, you take any element, you heat it and then if you see it, it absorbs energy and then you, it, the electron comes back to its own state and while coming back it emits the photon and you get this kind of spectrum. You have to pass it through prism so that you can see it actually and you will see something like this. Correct. So emission spectrum, you first excite an element or electron comes back, it emits a light. Absorption spectrum is just reverse of emission spectrum. It is like a photographic negative of emission spectrum. So in this case, we just pass a continuous, I'll show you. So we just pass a continuous radiation. Okay, we just pass all this radiation. This, this has all this lights, white light you can say. And there's a metal which absorbs something. For example, some of them are missing. Why? Because some of them is absorbed by this, this, this has a molecules, right? This atom. So this atom will take some, uh, absorb some energy to go to this state, right? Higher state. It will absorb some energy. So whatever you get here output, this will have some missing spectrum, right? Or missing photons. Why? Because it has everything. You pass it through coal or some gas. So this guy has atoms inside this and here this energy is used by this atom to excite. But only some kind of energy is used. So some of the energy is used. So some of the wavelength is used. And then we pass it through the spring, you feel that some of them is missing. 
this is all missing why it is missing this is missing because that is used by the coal gas and the one which is there is something which is not used okay so let's see the overview of continuous emission and absorption spectrum so you have any white light you just pass it through prism you see a continuous spectrum everything is continuous you have some hot gas right that will cool down actually and it will emit in this case what will happen is the electron will jump from higher to lower and it will emit light and that photon will when you pass through prism you get the emission spectrum and this case when you have the light when you pass through cold gas some of them is absorbed and what you get is absorption spectrum so if you see in this absorption spectrum only few of the energy is missing few of the weapons is missing apart from that you get everything so this is a three different kind of spectrum we have continuous you just take a light pass it through prism you get continuous you have a hot gas where if you see the electron is trying to all the electrons are excited now but it is going back to its uh, uh, low energy state and it is emitting uh, photons and that you can see is the emission spectrum and here you have uh, you you pass all this uh, light white light cold gas will absorb some to become hot to become hot so in this case if you see it's other way around in this last case so here the energy is used by this electron to get go to higher state so this energy is missing here and the wavelength is missing here so that's how we get absorption spectrum line spectra can also be used to identify elements as a very uh, big field actually each element has a unique spectrum because each element has a unique quantized energy level right so for example, this fingerprint is used to identify humans. Similarly, the line spectra can also be used to identify elements. And this guy, a German chemist, Robert Bunsen, he was the first investigator to use line spectra to identify elements. It was surprised that rubidium, cesium, thallium, indium, gallium, helium, scandium, these were discovered by spectroscopic method only. It was so powerful that they were elements which uh, was very difficult to uh, differentiate using chemical reactions, so it was differentiated using the spectra. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.